Good morning. If you want to open your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew this morning, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 as we continue a series that we started a couple of weeks ago called Beat the Curve, Moving Upward When Life is Upside Down. Today, church, I'm going to teach you how to beat the curve of stress. Stress is the monster of all responses. In fact, did you know that according to the American Institute of Stress, 55% of all Americans experience moderate to high levels of stress weekly. I think in the season it's almost hourly. Stress can come on many levels. Nervousness of a new job or work schedule, meeting new people, dealing with old people, a sudden illness or adversity, a, a loss of a job or loved one. Specifically in this time, stress can be expected, but should not be accepted. Prolonged stress can be debilitating and can lead to mental health problems, depression, anxiety, heart disease, cancer, obesity, lack of sleep, eating disorder. Stress is a monster. And every stress monster needs a stress master. When you place your complete trust in Jesus, you receive rest from Jesus. And that's how we beat stress. The one thing I want you to get for your walk in here and do life today is this. Jesus alone gives complete rest. Why don't we study in depthly this morning? Matthew 11, verses 27 through 30. And your Bible says this. And all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal to him. Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is going to give three verbs in verses 28 through 30 that can absolutely change your life when it comes to stress. He's going to say, come to me, take my yoke upon you, and learn from me. Now, in Matthew chapter 11, the persecution and rejection of Jesus has begun. Jesus is under a tumultuous season in the life of his ministry. Stress is everywhere. And he reminds us in verse 27 that God had chosen to reveal his perfect will and way through Jesus Christ. And now he begins to expound on the implications of the gospel. He says in verse 27, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. In fact, did you realize that this is the first time in the New Testament that Jesus uses the phrase, my Father? Jesus, as the main figure in Matthew, is given absolute authority by God himself. All control is given specifically to Jesus. Ultimately, in Matthew 28, verse 18, the resurrected Jesus will say, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me by the Father. There is literally every aspect of your life is under the control of Jesus Christ. Nothing is handed to you in your life without first going through his hands. The authority of Jesus had such an impact upon the New Testament writers, it is mentioned 102 separate times in the New Testament. You want to know why? Because Jesus is the aim of life. Jesus is always your ultimate need in any situation in your life. What do you do when life is unbearable? Where do you go when things unravel? Man cannot begin with himself and arrive at an ultimate reality because all reality is created by Jesus and held together through Jesus and ultimately for Jesus. Knowledge enlightens but does not comfort. Facts inform but cannot transform your heart. Advice is nice but will not bring lasting solution and satisfaction. You see, if we're not careful, we'll seek to be replenished and refreshed and renewed from other things besides Jesus Christ. And thus we will, by consequence, become selfish and self-centered and self-absorbed and self-consumed. Stress is the result of those choices. All religions and philosophies and pursuits then, apart from the gospel, are useless, for they cannot save are satisfied. Jesus did not just come with a word from God, but as the word of God. He is truly, according to Matthew 1 verse 23, Emmanuel, God with us. Thus, in times of stress, God in you and with 
you. For Jesus alone gives complete rest. And it's this foundation that now Jesus gives three verbs that can change your life when you beat the curve with stress. Come to me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Look at verse 28. Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, verse 28 right here is the key verse in this passage. Jesus commands us to prioritize as a way of life, to depend upon him as we follow him. Come to me signifies a sudden submission with the intent of continually staying and receiving Jesus' help. Come to me and stay with me as I help you, Jesus is saying. We are to intentionally come to Jesus with everything, with our sin and with our stress and with our burdens. When stressed, the priority then is setting your mind on Jesus, staying your mind and your thoughts on Jesus. For there is nothing on the outside that can give you peace like him on the inside. Tired, fed up, burned up, Come to Jesus. For if you want to change your life, keep your mind and your thoughts on Jesus. Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This word labor here, it describes someone who works to weariness. One who literally labors to the point of sheer Exhaustion. It describes someone who is worn out, weighed down, crushed by life. Metaphorically, it was used in Jesus' day of a ship that was so overwhelmed by its cargo, it just went down and down and down in sinking to the bottom of the sea. You know anybody like that in this season of life? Have you had a season of your life where you were like that? In fact, did you realize that 36% of all Americans feel permanently stuck in Stress. We've tried everything possible to handle stress in our own way. Jesus says, no, come to me. You see, your mind is to be overwhelmed by Jesus, not your problems. Stress reveals the reality of whether we are following ourselves or Jesus. When we have times that are unexpected or when we have something that seems unbearable, when we begin to feel the weight and the consequence of that reality, that is God signaling to us that, look, we're beginning to step out of faith and into our flesh, that we are literally beginning to follow ourselves and not Jesus. Self-effort is exhausting. Self-reliance is eternally, endlessly frustrating. Jesus provides rest. Rest describes in verse 28 a pleasant rejuvenation, a vibrant refreshment. You can almost feel the reality of that truth working in and through you. Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, Jesus's rest is never exhausted. Are you exhausted this morning? Are you exhausted by the reality of the last eight weeks of life and what this, what this means for the next eight weeks and eight months and eight years of our lives? May I encourage you to, to come to Jesus and allow his rest. Though you're exhausted, his rest is never exhausted. In fact, l- let me give you, in light of just life, when you're needing Jesus' rest, l- let me give you four truths four truths that literally can empower his rest through you. R-E-S-T. Number one, remember Jesus is in control. I mean, when life is out of control, you have to remind yourself, Jesus is in control and his rest is never exhausted. Remember, Jesus is in control. Number two, either let Jesus deal with your stress or your stress will deal with you. Stress is never neutral. It either goes your way or Jesus' way. Remind yourself that God is wanting you to deal with this. And that is why he has given you the power of his Holy Spirit. And so in light of that, remind yourself either I'm going to let Jesus deal with this stress or stress is going to deal with me. 
Jesus's rest is never exhausted. Thirdly, the S stands for stay focused and spirit led. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by this. This is a distraction. This is keeping you from God's word, God's will, and thus God's way. You've got to stay laser focused on truth. And the truth comes from God's word. You've got to stay laser focused on God's promises. You've got to stay laser focused on who Christ is in you. And you've got to allow the spirit to lead your life. Starve your flesh. Starve your doubts. Starve your fears and your worries. And allow the spirit to fill you with the power that comes from God himself. Jesus' rest is never exhausted. Finally, the T says for trust, Jesus' way. Jesus' way is always best. And so regardless of, of what comes your way of life, you gotta remind yourself, Lord, you're in control. Lord, I, I'm gonna let you deal with this, not myself. Father, I'm staying focused on you, your word, your son, and that's your way. And I'm gonna allow your spirit to lead me through this. And I'm going to trust Jesus. Why? Because Jesus alone gives complete rest. Look at verse 29. Jesus then says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Now, Jesus' rhetoric here is astonishing. He places the means of rest solely on whether we are willing to submit to him. Now, we love verse 28. Come to me, all who are labor and heavy laden. Yep, that sounds great. I'm going to come to you, Lord. Okay, here's how you do that. You now take my yoke upon you. You learn from me. You see, a yoke in Palestine was made of wood. And it was used as a means to harness two animals to pull a plow or a cart. And usually a master or a farmer would pair up a strong ox with a weak ox every single time. You wouldn't have two strong oxes on this harness. You wouldn't have two weak oxes on this harness. You would have a strong ox and a weak ox. And the strong ox would lead and the weak ox would follow. You see, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll want God's blessing in Jesus' favor, but we'll, we'll want to do it our way. And God won't bless that at all. He doesn't promise to bless that at all in the scriptures. No, when we come to Jesus, we come on his terms. And Jesus says to come to me, but also to take my yoke upon you. If we do this our own way, it's not going to go good. God blesses and Jesus empowers his way, not our way. In fact, a World War II Air Force pilot said it well when he said, there are old pilots and bold pilots. However, there are no old, bold pilots. Pilots. <laughs> I mean, we have a mission. And if you go outside that mission and do your own way, it's not going to go well. The same is true spiritually. When we try to handle stress our own way, when we get away from God's word and God's promises, things do not go well at all. Now, I'm not saying you, you don't have multiple options to do that. In fact, if you were to Google how to handle stress, you have 760 million options to choose from. Zero solutions, but 760 million options. And you can put together a plan, but if you go your way outside of God's way, it's not going to end well. In fact, the great theologian Mike Tyson said it best when he said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Jesus knowing that, he says, come to me. Take my yoke upon you, verse 29. Learn from me. Life only works when we let Jesus do his work. You see, Jesus as a carpenter, he would have made many yokes. And a carpenter would have meticulously and carefully crafted a yoke specifically for the benefit of the animal. This yoke is not to harm the animal, but to rather harness the animal's true potential. In fact, yokes were widely used in the ancient world for submission to instruction, as an animal could not put on its own yoke. And so you'd have one specifically made for him. Jews spoke figuratively of the law as the yoke of God. Now with that in mind, look back at verse 29. Take my yoke upon you. True 
rest from stress is found when we submit to Jesus' way over our own. Jesus commands his followers to comprehensive self-denial, to humble, submissive commitment to him for control of their life in taking on and receiving his yoke. Stress consumes us because we don't know what's going to happen. Faith rests in the assurance Jesus does know and is actively working alongside us in our lives. Take my yoke upon you. I mean, how in the world do you do that? How do you take Jesus' yoke? Let me give you three things. One, take it up. Lord, this is beating me down. This is dragging me down. Well, then take it up. Take it up to him. Lord, you are high and lifted up. You are the risen Christ. You are above all. You are undefeated, unparalleled. And I'm giving you my stress. I'm taking it up. Secondly, I take it to the book. I mean, regardless of what stress is taken from you, you take it to God's word. And you say, nope, this situation, God has an answer right here. Nope, this situation, God has a solution right here. Nope, this situation in my life, nope, God's promises are right here. I'm going to take it to his book, his word, and thus his will, and thus his way in my life. Finally, take it out. <laughs> just sometimes, I mean, just when life gets crazy in our house, I'll just come home, and man, I've got five kids, 10 and under, and man, they're hungry. They get hungry. And so I look at mama, and she says, no, 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 kitchen clothes, not today. And so then I say, okay, dad's cooking. And our kids just go crazy. Take out. And so usually that's, that's kind of two places right now in our neck of the woods. One is Andalini's. So hey, man, just Andalini's, kind of working pizza magic, pizza. Or it's Chewy's, fajita magic. I mean, there's really nothing that can better cope with the stress of life than Jesus and fajitas. I mean, don't we just all need more and more and more daily of some jalapeno ranch with chips? Yes, I think we do. Throw in some chocolate. The Lord is good, right? But here's the thing about takeout. Once, once you get it, it's great. But then if you can't eat it all, what do you do? You put it in the fridge. And so maybe you can eat it one more time, but you would never eat it a third time. You would never eat it a fourth time. Well, then why do you do the same things with your stress? I mean, so you've given it to Jesus. You've given whatever this is. Why do you keep taking it back? Why? You've given it to him. Take my yoke upon you. I'm taking it up. I'm taking it to the book. And I'm taking it out. Leave it there. Just as you throw away your old leftovers. Whatever it is that you just keep going over and over and over again in your mind, take it out. Give it to Jesus. This stress monster has a stress master. And his name is Jesus. Jesus alone gives complete rest. Take my yoke upon you. The third verb found in verse 29 is, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, here's something fascinating. Jesus quotes right here this phrase, Jeremiah 6, verse 16. In Jeremiah 6, verse 16, God's people are being pummeled, oppressed, about to be taken over by darkness. And God, in the midst of this darkness, brings a light and says, thus says the Lord, stand by the roads. Look, ask for the ancient paths, where the good way is, and walk in it and find what? Rest for your souls. But here's what they did. But they said, we will not walk in it. In the midst of this avalanche of awfulness, God says, don't run, stand. Don't look down, look up. Ask yourselves for the ancient path. Where is the truth? Where is the way out of this? Where is the good way? And do it. Walk in it. And you will find rest for your soul. The very thing that you're desiring the most is available. It's right here. If you'll stand and look and ask and walk. But they said, no, we're not going to walk in it. You see, if we're not careful, we'll come to Jesus. We'll take on his yoke. He's the strong one. He's the greater one. He's the one that's undefeated, unparalleled. But yet the moment we start walking with Jesus, 
will stop learning from Jesus. And that is the exact opposite of God's will and that's God's way for your life. You see, there is nothing you can earn from Jesus, but there's always something you can learn from Jesus. You see, learn is closely related to the word disciple in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 in regard to the Great Commission. And a disciple who learns from Jesus, he learns by following Jesus over and over and over again. Why? Because Jesus is both the giver of life changing content and the life changer. Jesus says, come to me. Take my yoke upon you and then learn from me while following me. That's his point. So stop yearning for a new way to fix your problems and start learning Jesus' way. You see, faith frees us from the stress of self-reliance. We now depend upon Jesus Christ. So pray about it more than you think about it. What you think about has you, controls you. So pray about it more than you think about it. Faith frees us from the stress of self-reliance. Faith also frees us from the stress of self-absorption. Jesus understands where you are and what you need. (laughs) Sometimes when things happen in our lives and we just don't understand, we've got to remind ourselves, no, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm taking your yoke. Father, I'm wanting to learn from you. You and your son through your spirit. And thus I got to remind myself when I don't understand, Jesus always understands. He understands where I am and he understands what I need. Faith frees us from the stress then of self-exaltation. You see, if you truly want to release this stress in your life, you got to change the pronoun. I mean, is this about you? Is this about your identity and your image and you, know, you proving that you can beat this and nothing's going to hold you down? God doesn't promise to bless that at all. Jesus doesn't empower things that aren't his way. Instead, change the pronoun. Lord, this isn't about me. This is about him. This is about Jesus. And in light of that, whatever it is, Jesus has come to me. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Don't hold on to it. Release it. Don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed by this thing. Rather, take this stress monster to its stress master and allow Jesus to do what he does best. You say, what happens in my life when I do that? Verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, stress departs when we realize life is not about what we do for Jesus, but what Jesus does through us. Jesus' yoke is always well-fitting, is good, pleasing, and everlasting. You will have burdens either with Jesus or without Jesus. Why carry a burden you were never intended to carry? Jesus is the burden bearer and thus the burden lifter. And Jesus is strong enough to carry you and your burdens at the same time. So you can rest because Jesus will always give his best. Stress is a monster. Every stress monster needs a stress master. Church, let's beat the curve in regard to stress. And let's give this stress monster to our stress master, Jesus Christ. For Jesus alone gives complete rest.